about nine years ago, we started studying birth defects and the disease that we were studying is cleft lip and palate. In the midst of our studies, we were very surprised to see that some of the experimental models that we were looking at not only had cleft lip and palate, but also had neural tube defects. The neural tube is the um, structure that happens very early on in, um, in embryonic development that allows us to ultimately have a brain and a spinal cord. If we don't have the neural tube closing at the top end of the, of the body, then um, you can have sometimes what's called anencephaly, which can cause fetal demise. And uh, at the other end of the neural tube, if that uh, portion of the tube doesn't close, then you can have spina bifida, which is associated with lifelong uh, morbidity and, um, and health issues. This group of genes that uh, were contributing to cleft lip and palate could also be contributing to neural tube defects, and those are both common sporadic diseases that can happen to anybody across the world. And the frequency is as high as one in 500 to one in 700 uh, individuals um, worldwide. And we wanted to study that further because if we can identify a group of genes that was contributing to two common um, birth defects, then we can better prevent them in the future. And so we dug in and we performed thousands of experiments to find out why, when, and how this problem was happening. And after about five years of work, we ultimately found that one, two, three genes that we thought contributing to cleft lip and palate could also be contributing to neural tube defects. We reached out to uh, collaborators and researchers across the country and they use their precious samples to look for problems in the genes that we were studying in their populations and after sequencing for a period of two years we ultimately found that this same group of genes that we were studying in the experimental model was contributing to neural tube defects and cleft lip and palate in humans and that was a very important finding because it meant that our study of genes and trying to find genes that are contributing to um, problems um, during development could be a little bit narrower. And we didn't have to find 22,000 genes. Maybe nature had found a way to replicate developmental programs from one type of tissue into another type of tissue. So in this case, from formation of the lip and palate to formation of the brain and the neural tube.